Hey, welcome. This is I3D Jack. Let's go ahead and kickstart this and get it into gear. Okay, so in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on modeling in XSI using polygons. Since you're a beginner, probably you are if you're looking at this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and show you and explain to you what polygons are. Now, before we actually get started on working on anything, we have to first prepare our tools and get them ready to go. Now, just like working on any object you're going to work on in the real world, you have to get your tools ready. You have to know where those tools are before you can actually get to work. So let's go ahead real quick and familiarize ourselves with the elements of the XSI interface we're going to be using quite a bit. Now, the first thing is over here on the left, you'll see this huge menu over here that has this sort of a lavender light purplish color. And this is the model main toolbar. Now, this as a whole is the main toolbar. But if we go up here where it says model, where it has this little black arrow, click on that to expand the sub menu. We have different modes we have. We have animate, which is green, renders blue, simulate is this pink, very pale red color. And then we have red hair in this orange over here. Now, what we're interested in is model because we're going to be modeling using polygons during the entirety of this tutorial. We're never really going to talk about animation or simulation or anything like that. So we're going to stick mainly with this toolbar over here, which is the model toolbar. Now, the model toolbar has all of our tools for modeling. Uh, tools for extruding, tools for beveling, tools for cutting things, putting things back together, separating them, etc., etc. Over here in the main menu bar, we also have access to these same tools. So if we go over here to where it says model and click on that with the left mouse button, you'll expand this menu here. Now you can tear off this menu by hitting the scissors icon up here, and I could go ahead and demonstrate that right now. Now you can just drag this wherever you want, double click on it to collapse and tuck it away. Double click on the name bar up here where it says model in the blue to expand it back out again. You can click and drag it anywhere you want. This is very helpful for keeping your menus open as long as you want them to. And you'll notice that all the tools and options here are the same exact ones that are available on the main toolbar. So why have these two? Well, the reason you can have these two is for flexibility. It just allows you to go ahead and say you want to open up a render menu and keep it open at the same time while you work in model mode. You can do that. So essentially, you can work in three or four different modes simultaneously. So that's another way of accessing the menus up there. Then, of course, we have modeling construction mode up here in this menu. We have four different construction modes that you can use in XSI. These give you a lot of power because they give you the ability to model and create things in a nonlinear fashion. And if you're not familiar with nonlinear uh, workflows are, uh, don't worry about it. You'll pick up on that sooner or later. Right now, it's really not that important, but I wanted to go ahead and show you that we have these different construction modes. And the one we're going to be working on mainly is model construction mode. And I'll give you a little example later of what the difference is between these different construction modes and a little taste of the flexibility and power they give you in XSI. Okay. The other main part of the interface we're going to be using is on the right over here. This is called the MCP, which is short for Main Command Panel. And the Main Command Panel is used for a lot of things. Now, it can be used for all kinds of things in XSI. We're going to be using it quite a bit while we're working on modeling throughout this entire tutorial series. So we're going to be using it for scaling things, moving things around, rotating them. We're going to be using it for snapping things here with the Snap menu. We can also use it for constraining things and parenting, cutting those relationships, putting them back together. We're also going to be using edit down here, the freeze modeling and group things and different things like that. So we're going to be using quite a quite a large number of features and tools over here in the main command panel. As you can see, these uh, menu items that have a little black arrow open up sub menus and some of these with the black arrow, of course, open up other sub menus. So there's a lot of things to cover and we're going to be going over thing, everything in a very practical manner while modeling real world objects so you can get a very good taste of it and pretty much become an expert by the end of this tutorial in modeling. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to end this video here and in the next video we'll just uh, go ahead and pick up where I left off right here.